You might be wondering what this is behind me. And before I really tell you what it is, I'm gonna go ride it around a bit. I'm not gonna go up the road to the airport because that's not what this bike is made for. So this is a torque sensing motor. That means that as I pedal harder, the bike knows that I'm putting more force into the pedals and it's gonna go faster. That's different from a cadence sensor where it detects your motion of pedaling, but not how hard you're pedaling. So if I pedal harder, it's kind of like I'm superhuman and I'm just going faster. So I'm in level one assist, shifting up through the gears here. Okay, so this is level one assist. So lowest power setting, highest gear. I'm pedaling. I can be spinning a little faster. So I'm doing about 25, 26 miles an hour. Not a slow bike. Glasses down, we got wind. So I just gotta get off the road here in the moment and hit the trail. Here comes the single track, glasses up. Let's have some fun. All right, so here's a rough section of the trail, a little rockier. <laughs> oh, tree down. I kind of want to hit one of those bumps and just get some air, but it's just, it's just soaking everything up. I haven't even used more than assist level one yet. Let's give it some throttle. Ooh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Was not prepared for that. <laughs> that was insane. This thing jumps like a beast. This bike definitely needs to see a good long downhill trail. Oh. Yeah! Oh. Pedal strike. Okay, um, well, first impression on the trail is that this thing is an animal. <laughs> but so smooth, it just, I could not go at those speeds on, on my fat bike. My fat bike rolls over everything, but oh, it just doesn't soak up the bumps like that does. This is so fun. Seems wrong. Yeah! Got a little bit of air. Landed so nice. Let's get some speed. Now to better understand what this bike is and who it's for, I was trying to figure out what are some other comparable bikes on the market like this. So we have 27 and a half plus size tires. You've got full suspension, rock shocks, front and rear, 160 millimeters of travel. I mean, it's, it's just an awesome mountain bike. This thing is designed for the trails for sure. And doing a little bit of research, one of the bikes that has come up lately and there's starting to be more videos about is the Santa Cruz Heckler. 
and I don't want to say they're the same because they're not. Uh, I'll be honest, the Santa Cruz bike is more expensive. The Santa Cruz bike is a lot lighter <laughs> by about 20 pounds actually. So be aware that there are some differences, but as far as the rest of the components go, there are a lot of similarities. And let me, let me tell you just a few of those. So both of the bikes come with Maxxis tires that are 27 plus tires. Uh, these are tubeless ready, so very similar there. Uh, 160 millimeters of travel that I mentioned on both bikes. They both have 200 millimeter rotors on them. Uh, both have hydraulic brakes. Obviously the brand is different. This one is a Tektro Dorado. It's a new version of the brake that's out. Um, they're quite powerful, quite nice, and they do have the brake cutoff switches built in. Uh, if you're going to the Santa Cruz bike, then they're using SRAM components. Uh, as far as the drivetrain goes, let's talk about the gears before we get into the power first. This is using, I'm checking all my notes to make sure I'm telling you the right things. So this is using a Shimano Dior 10 speed setup. And then on something more expensive like a Santa Cruz bike, uh, they're using the SRAM Eagle 12 speed. The, the Santa Cruz is a full carbon fiber frame and that's where some of the weight savings is coming from. Now we kind of have to get into the power. So Santa Cruz bike, you are talking about a Shimano step drivetrain. It's a mid drive setup and it's 250 watts. So not very much. Uh, this one is the Bafang Ultra, totally unlocked, 1500 watts. So that's, in case you need to do the math, or don't want to do the math, that's six times the number of watts that this is capable of putting out. A lot more power. Uh, this is rated for 160 Newton meters of torque. A Santa Cruz bike is rated for 70 Newton meters of torque. So whole different ball game when you start talking about the power. Now, of course, when you use more power, ideally you need a bigger battery. So this has a 48 volt, 21 amp hour. That's a one kilowatt hour battery stock. And that is double the size, the battery that comes on the Santa Cruz Heckler that we're referring to. So once again, they're, they're different bikes because the power on this one is so much greater. The battery is so much bigger. But when you get to the rest of the suspension components and the wheels and the brakes, there are a lot of similarities. So maybe there's something else there that out there that compares better. Um, but that's a modern example of a, a name brand bike that people are looking at that I see as a similar bike and maybe a, a competitor. I think somebody who's shopping in this price range could possibly look at both. So let's talk about price. Let's start with the, the Santa Cruz model, and some of you are going to be shocked. Uh, there's no other nice way to put it. The Santa Cruz Heckler starts at $7,399. That's the base model. Now, there's four different versions from looking at their website. Basically, they go from that $7,400 price up to just over $13,000 for the highest end. Now, because I focus on electric bikes, I'm going to focus on the electrical components more than the rest of it. But the short end of it is if you get to about the $10,000 price range, as far as electrical, the only thing I think I saw that changes is you go from a small black and white display to a color display. The battery's the same, the motor's the same, everything else is exactly the same. What you are getting are, instead of rock shocks for the forks front and rear, um, they're going up to Fox short. Fox shocks, uh, they're changing out the handlebars. Basically, you're getting an upgrade on the suspension, the drivetrain components, not the electrical part of it though. The motor stays the same. Um, you know, maybe the seat post, uh, brakes, those kind of things. So weight-wise, you might think, oh, maybe they're adding a bunch of lighter things on there. Uh, and I do have the weight of that bike written down because it's impressive. Uh, it's 47. 0.6 pounds for that base model. Uh, you get down to 46.29 pounds uh, for the lightest $13,000 version. Now as a comparison, I don't have one of them sitting out here, but um, one of the lighter off-road style bikes I have is the 
24 and 26 inch Bolton 2020 models. They're a fat bike and they're not full suspension. So not really a fair comparison. Um, they're in between both of these. They've got less power than this, but a lot more power than the Santa Cruz model. Uh, and those come in like 58 to 60 pound range. So the Santa Cruz bike is by far, by far the lightest. It's 10 pounds lighter. So less than 50 pounds, full suspension. Um, it's pretty awesome. And there's some other bikes out there. Um, you know, maybe I should have included in this video. Maybe I'll come back to that, you know, with uh, Trek and Specialize that are coming out with similar things that are full suspension, lightweight. Um, but that just kind of gives you an idea of where the price range is on something that's what I would call a name brand like that. Uh, so what does this bike cost? I know that's one of the questions you're probably thinking of. Well, if that is $7,000, this is heavier maybe slightly less on the components, but it's got way more power. How does it fit in? Uh, and it's gonna be less, quite a bit less. So this one, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be at the $49.99 price range, so $5,000. There are just a few of these in stock in the US right now. So what I'm gonna do is put this online, put these bikes online right when this video comes out uh, at $4,500, so $500 off. And honestly, the most expensive bike I've had up until now is this, the 1000 watt fat bike. It's $2,399, so $2,400 on sale, $4,500. That is a big jump in price. Now we go with bigger, better components. There's just the motor, the battery, the kind of the rotors, the whole package is what makes this more expensive. But this is a, a higher end bike and I understand that some people don't wanna spend that much money and that's totally okay. I'm not getting rid of these kind of options. 2,400, I mean 1,300. I'm always going to have affordable e-bikes, but I have people asking me thing, for things that just have more power, more range, and I decided, you know what? It's time to put my toes in the water a little bit, try something that is at a higher price point with higher end components and see what you guys think. But I still want it to be affordable compared to the competition. I don't even know what I'm going to call this bike yet, um, but I'll put a link in the description to my website so you can see it. Like I said, there's only a few of them that are available right now. Uh, and then there's gonna be a bit of a lead time until we get more. Um, but if you guys like this, if you wanna see more of this, please comment below. Tell me that you want to see more powerful, higher-end bikes from Bolton e-bikes, and I'll make it happen. Uh, and I'll be honest, this isn't the only new thing that's coming. I'm not going to spoil it yet, but I want you to make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit like. YouTube loves it when you hit the like button, and so do I. So hit that like button right now, because this is a full suspension mountain bike with the Bafang Ultra motor, and... I'm gonna have another video coming out in the next week or two with another model that has the ultra motor that is just gonna blow your mind. Uh, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a few different versions. So price range is going to go from, you know, say this $2,400 range, but something different up to the price point of where this is at, but with fat tires and something that I guarantee you have not seen before. So we're gonna, we're gonna try some different bikes. We've got some exciting new things coming. Uh, make sure to stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be back with another video. And if you're still here wanting to know more about the bike, that's totally fine. Let's run over those specs one more time. 160 Newton meters of torque, the Bafang Ultra torque sensing motor, 1500 watts. This is a 48 volt, 21 amp hour, so that's one kilowatt hour battery. And this is using the Samsung 35E cells. So if you actually wanna look up and see what sort of performance, what sort of amps that battery is rated for, if you would really like to get into the technical details, those are the cells that are being used. RockShox Yari fork on the front with 160 millimeters of travel. And we've got the RockShox Monarch for the rear. Of course, this has lockout. It's adjustable on the rebound, air adjustable. Uh, these are good quality components. And then we've got those Tektro Dorado brakes. 
These are a higher end Tektro brake. I, I like that they're making really good e-bike brakes. We've got nice, massive 200 millimeter rotors. Now coming around to the drivetrain, this is where we have the Shimano Dior 10 speed. So a nice wide range. This is geared low enough, it's gonna climb absolutely anything. Uh, top speed wise, uh, it's gonna top out around 35 or so miles an hour and you kind of run out of gears. If it was geared higher, honestly, the bike would go faster, uh, but this thing is made to climb. This thing is made for off-road trails. You don't need those high, high-end speeds. Uh, you need the torque down low. So I think that was a good choice, the way that this thing is geared. Now we do have the uh, Maxxis tires, like I mentioned, tubeless ready, 27.5 by 2.8 wide tires and then something that's interesting i find on this bike is it actually has this was a surprise to me lights uh, this is not just a blinking light it's wired into the battery and it is a functional brake light which is pretty awesome and then there's also a headlight uh, not the brightest headlight but it's it's decent that's also wired into the battery and into the controller so you can turn it on from the buttons on the screen and it has these handy little lights on the side that can be adjusted, so you can kind of have some lights pointed down and some pointed forward. Um, like I said, not the fanciest light, but it's just something it comes with, so nice that it's there. Now the display is the one of the Bafang displays, a nice bright color display. You can actually see everything, shows you the battery voltage, how fast you're going, miles, the mode you're in, trip meter, uh, it even has a clock. So for those that have asked about a clock in the past, this one actually has it. And there we go. I'm trying to get the corner of this thing. So you can actually, there we go. Ah, that's so much better. Perfect. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, and it does of course have a, a throttle. Uh, so if you really don't want to pedal, uh, you don't have to. And with a battery with a one kilowatt hour capacity, uh, you can get pretty far on this thing. Now, one thing, one last thing I want to say on some of these other full suspension bikes like this, I've seen some videos where guys have taken them and taken them on the trails. One of the most popular trails here in Northern California is the Downeyville downhill. If you haven't seen it, go look it up, check out some videos. It's awesome. If you want to see, this bike on the Downeyville downhill. If you wanna see me do a video on that, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and tell me that you've done that. If you do, I'll, uh, I'll give somebody a free Bolton e-bikes hat if you tell me if you wanna see that or not. Uh, I haven't done that video yet, but I'm definitely considering it. I just wanna make sure that that's the type of content you guys wanna see. So if you wanna see an awesome downhill trail run on this new, full suspension mountain bike, leave a comment and let me know.